What's up guys? I'm Sean the Bro and we are back for the third episode of the fighting game tutorial in Unreal and C++. So today we are going over health bars and stamina slash mana bars. Um, in this particular case, in the fighting game case, we're probably not going to use stamina or mana, but maybe this could be like an X meter or like a, uh, like a super move meter or something like that. Uh, that would be the blue one. I'm actually not going to do that today anyway. I'm going to strictly be focusing on the health meter, which is the red one, but we can add something to that later. I threw it in because I thought it kind of looks good in terms of, you know, oh, look how easy these are to implement, things like that. So let's go over it. Uh, we're going to, this is, this will be your end result. You'll be able to press a button and lose health. And that sounds pretty simple. Uh, we also have it logging out here. So taking damage for 0.05 points. And that sounds pretty simple, but uh, it's one of the core mechanics that you're going to need for a fighting game. So I figured let's just go over the basicest, the most basic, excuse me, I don't know what that was. Uh, the most basic experience, uh, the most basic way to do this. That was a mouthful for me, apparently. Uh, saying that sentence was not the most basic sentence I could have said. Anyway, we're going to do that in terms of C++ and one widget, which is a character HUD. So if we go, if we exit this right here, uh, you're going to go to your Unreal, your scene that we're in. You're going to go to your content browser. Make sure content is clicked. Now, because of the way I'm recording this, I'm trying out a new, a new way of doing this. I have to bring my content browser up so I can show you guys. You're gonna to go to user interface and then mine gets cut off and this is unfortunately as low as I can bring my window uh, based on the way I'm trying to record this. But if you go to the fourth one down, you'll see widget blueprint. And if for whatever reason you're using a different version and widget blueprint is not the fourth one, just find that. It'll be in your version of Unreal. Uh, and if you hover, if you wanna be sure you're on the same thing I'm on, just the, if you hover over it, the text will say, the widget blueprint enables extending you user widget, the user extensible you widget, okay? So you're gonna click that and it's going to create a new widget for you. And when it opens, it'll look like this. It won't have the health or stamina bars here, but you'll have a blank panel here. And it'll be in this like, this designer view, things like that. So that's pretty simple. Sorry, I couldn't show you that. That'll be the only thing I can't actually show you. And that'll be fixed ne next episode. It's because of the way I set up my recording for today. But by the time I have done this, uh, I already screwed that part up. So it's too late for <laughs> to fix it for today. Anyway, if you go to the if you go to that file you made, I just made a health bar and a stamina bar, which all they are is a progress bar. So I just made two progress bars. I changed their color. Didn't mean to do all that. I changed their color. So if you go down to, if you scroll down the details panel and go to appearance, you can set their fill color and opacity. I chose red for health and then for stamina, whatever this really is, super bar, I put blue. It's that easy. Since we're not using the stamina bar today, that's good enough for that. But for the health bar, we do need to do one more thing. Let's go to the C++ side and then we will finish this up, but I wanted you to have this so you could visualize what we were working with first. As always, you can go to your C++ classes to find the file. Uh, I'm specifically just going to open up Visual Studio because I already had it open one and two because that's how I'm used to doing it. So uh, if you remember last time we added the attacks that you could do in your fighting game, which, was, which were attacks one, two, three, and four which is just you press a key and you do an action. So that was pretty simple stuff. Um, I didn't want to go over her how to do keyboard input again for this episode. So I'm going to tie it to attack four is what damages your character. Uh, just because that's an easy enough test. And then in the next episode, we can test actually getting hit or like upon collisions with things uh, doing damage. So we're going to use the functions that we create today in the next episode in a more sophisticated uh, correct for fighting games manner. So this will be a pretty short video, but for the next five minutes or so, we're going to go over how to do that. 
Uh, so there's two things you're going to need, and before I get started, I'm going to give you this iCard in the top right hand corner of your screen uh, of the video, and you should see it right about now. And that is to the third person template. So the third person template, I did go over the health and stamina mechanics a little bit more in depth, uh, but you don't necessarily need that for the video. For, excuse me, for this tutorial, for this project, if you feel that you want a little bit more functionality, this is going to basically give you the exact same stuff, uh, just with a little bit less depth. So if you want that extra depth, then go ahead and click on that video now. You can come back here when you're done watching it. Okay, and if you didn't want to go or you're done watching it, whatever, that's just, that'll basically explain to you how to do all that. Uh, we're going to go over the simpler version, but, you know, maybe you found out you didn't need that. So here we go. So in your fighter template character header, which this is the name of your project, character header. So this class right here, you're going to want to add two things. You're going to want a take damage function, which should take in a float value um, of whatever. This is, this is, in our case, damage amount. So it should take in a float value of damage. Then you're going to need your player health, obviously, because you need something to track how much health you're currently at. So specifically, in or in this case, since we're working with the HUD as well, and we want to have the health and mana, or health and stamina, or whatever, uh, we want to be able to use that health variable in blueprints so that the HUD can see it. So we're going to do a U property. I said edit anywhere. Uh, blueprint read write that way you can edit it in blueprint and any of the files where it's contained um, and I put it under category health you don't need to make the category but the category will make it so it'll make it so that uh, you can group all your variables together in blueprint so it's just a, strictly a visual thing it's not necessary but it's a good thing to get into the habits habit of if you're going to be transferring a lot of variables between C++ and blueprints uh, and then just the name of the variable. So float player health. And then in the C++ class, the, it's the class to that header file. Um, at the bottom of, of the uh, constructor, I went ahead and just set player health equal to 1 because progress bars go on a 0 to 1 scale. You can go ahead and change this if you'd like. I went ahead and left it alone because honestly 0 to 1 is easy enough math. Uh, there are some advantages to doing it, to converting it to a 0 to 100 scale, and we can go over that in another episode, but for now let's keep it simple, and just set your player health equal to 1, which is a, um, a perfect 100% health. So, and then all we're going to do to finish this is have a take damage function that takes in your damage amount. We already created it in the header file, just write it out in C++. I added a log. Uh, this is just UE's logging system, so Unreal's logging system. You can use log temp, which is a temp that just, or it's a log that does not get saved necessarily. Um, it just gets printed out to the screen and forgotten about. Warning makes the text yellow. You can also do error if you want the text to be red. And then this text macro, basically it's just a pound to find. So in Unreal, um, I think I might have gone over this ep last episode, but in Unreal, sometimes you have to do this text macro before a string just because that's the way Unreal converts it internally. So don't worry about this too much. You can use this exact same setup. This is just to print stuff to your log or to your screen, depending on how you do it. Uh, nothing that really you need to worry about too much, but we are taking damage for percent F points. So when you see a percent sign in front of a letter, in C++, you are making it so you're going to print a variable to that string. So we are taking damage for percent float points, and the float is the damage amount. So if you were to make this, if this value were to be 10, then you would be taking damage for 10 points. And all you do is player health minus equals damage amount. We have the 1.0, so all we want to do is subtract the damage that we got from our health and set that to our new health. And then I have, if player health is less than zero, set equal to zero. 
this is not really necessary, but there are some reasons I choose to do this just because of things I've seen in the past. Feel free to do this safe this little safeguard. I'll basically just say your health can't go less than zero. Okay. So if we go back over to Unreal, uh, we're gonna pick up where we left off on the blueprint and we'll finish this up. So in this case, we have to go to our health bar and you can go down to this thing called progress, this little category called progress, go to percent, and this will say the word bind. Uh, and here it is, I'll show you what it looks like. It'll look like this, it'll say bind. If you haven't already done it, you can go, uh, you just click this down and hit create binding. And what that'll do is that'll put you in this little function here. It'll bring you to graph and it'll say get health bar percent zero pure. You can rename this if you want, but honestly, just keep it like that for now. Um, and we're just going to do this little tiny bit of functionality and we will be good. So make sure you built Visual Studio. I should have mentioned that. That's an easy thing to forget. Make sure you built Visual Studio or rebuilt Visual Studio. Make sure it completes. And if Unreal does not hot reload, it'll make a sound if it does. And it will... Um, sometimes flash the screen depending on the version you're on. Um, if it does that, you're good. If it doesn't, you can always come back and hit compile on the main page here. And this will make sure you're up to date. So it'll say uh, compiling C++ code and then it will finish in a few seconds. So once you have made sure that you've built or compiled this, uh, you just go here. So this get health bar present uh, percent zero will already be here when you come in and I'm pretty sure the return node already comes default uh, all we're gonna do is we're going to in this specific case we're gonna make this functionality a little bit better uh, when we do multiplayer so probably in one of the next episodes we don't want to keep this hard-coded for too long but this works for now we're going to get our player character with player index of zero this basically gets your first player character in the scene and you can choose which one that is if you go to the actual object in here. And I forget exactly how to do it, but if you really want to do it, there is a way to do it in all this junk. You just look over here through one of these and yeah, player zero, auto, auto possess player zero. So if you have it possessing player zero by default, then when you go to the player character for player index zero, you'll be referencing that character. So all you want to do is cast that to your uh, fighter template character. So whatever character you just had the code class open for, whatever this is, cast it to that class. Grab the uh, pull out from this and hit player character, or excuse me, player health, and then get player health. And you'll get this node right here. And then you just bring that into the return value. And what's going on here is you're taking the character that we have in the scene, casting it to a type that we created, and then uh, taking the player health variable that we made and updating this progress bar with it. Since we've bound this to this function, the return value from this function is basically it's the length of this bar. So if this value if the return value from here was 0.5, then this bar would be halfway. So to see it in action one final time, uh, for me, I bound it to my, oh yeah, let me, um, I don't think I clarified that. So for me, I just did in start attack four, which we made in last episode, take damage 0.05, which is basically five points of damage out of 100. So I could press the button 20 times and that's when I would end up dying. So you can add this here and start attack four. Sorry that I missed that. Here we go. So if you go back, build all that, play this, you realize when we press uh, the attack button, we are losing that health in the corner. And then we can run out to zero. Now we will add dying animations and stuff like that. And you know, obviously stop them from moving around after they after they've died. But this is a pretty good example uh, to show you how to do the most basic form of health bar. And now you can play around with that a little bit and get a feel for what you actually want to be in that, in that, um, 
in those fields, like how much damage, if you want it to be 0 to 1 or 0 to 100, things like that. So next episode, we're going to go over collision. So it's not just you pressing a button. It'll be like, uh, if we run into this player's hitbox, we will take damage. And we might even do some form of healing. Like, for example, if you do multiple rounds in a fighting game, you're going to want to heal your players between each round. So that's one way to do it. Anyway, guys, that's it for me. This is a pretty short video, but I just want to go over that before we get any more advanced. I know it has been a while since I uploaded a video. It was mainly because my charger caught on fire for my laptop, so I could not render anything. We have now fixed the situation. That's the reason you're seeing this video. So I hope you enjoyed, guys. If you did and you have any questions about any of the tutorials that I've made or anything that you want to see, feel free to ask them. Um, I'll be happy to go over any programming topic you have. Even if I don't make a video on it, I will uh, answer your question in the comments. So thank you guys very much for watching. If you enjoyed, please, please rate, comment, and subscribe. Um, in fact, let me skip. That was my old. That was my old outro. You don't have to rate. Comment if you want to. Subscribing is the big one that helps me out. That helps me know that you guys are really liking these series. This series, excuse me. Um, it helps me know that I'm doing a good job of teaching you things. So please, please subscribe. Thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you have a great night. And I'll see you in, in the next episode. This will be a lot sooner. And the next episode will probably be even later this week. Because... I'm going to do a third-person tutorial episode next. Okay, guys. Thank you. That's all for me. I'll see you in the next one. I'm Sean the Bro. Goodbye, guys.